this is the last thing that I have to say about this relationship. I mean, I've been writing about it for years. And now <laughs> I just have, this is it. Like I, this album is the last thing I have to say about it. Hello, Yay. beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Stanley. Yeah. Welcome back to the studio. Lizzie McAlpine. Hey. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wicked girly, eh? I am, yeah. Yo, that made me really happy. Listen to that shit many, many times on repeat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> me good and Renee, stuff. yeah. Really good. Yeah. How does that come to be? Like, obviously, it's on her stage, but like. <sighs> she kind of just texted me and was like, do you want to come sing with me? And I was like, totally. <laughs> I flew out to sing. And I flew back. But a special a special moment that lasts forever. Yeah. I mean, it was so much fun. How did she pitch you on song choice? I don't know. I think I think she was, I mean, it was the only one that we were going to sing. I mean, she was like, we have to sing for good. And I was like, yeah, totally. Sick. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> That's pretty much it. There's not much else to it. And honestly, like, it comes up on my TikTok algorithm. Rather often. Really? Yes. I feel like it does mine too, actually. It is something that will live forever in the best <laughs> possible way. Great. Also, Noah Khan, great yeah. little uh, collaboration over there. Yeah, he's great, yeah. Yeah, he's a special one. He is. But so are you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> real recognizes real. You're so fucking awesome. Thanks. This album's really great. Thank you. That means so much. Oh, that's we're, awesome. <laughs> we're, we're talking about older, and it is... It's wild to think that this whole thing was done really essentially live, right? Pretty much, yeah. So break down what that actually means. Um, Well, I started recording this with different producers in like 2022-ish, maybe 21. And we were doing it very like by the book. We were like bringing in session musicians and having them play in like separate rooms, different days. It was, it was all like how I've done it, but it was sounding very, I don't know. It was just, it was just not, there was no life to it. It was very unemotional. And then at a certain point I kind of pivoted and I found this band that I'm working with, which I went, I went to a Ryan Beatty concert (laughs) and Um, I saw this band and this is what is at a point where I was like so lost. I was so confused. I was like, I don't know what this album needs. I don't know how to make it sound like I, I know it can sound. I remember running into you at some like random, like (laughs) somewhat douchey Hollywood party. Yes. Oh, the variety party. Yes. And you were at that point and I remember you telling me that. I was like really not doing well. I was like so lost. I had no idea how, because I knew what I wanted it to sound like, but I couldn't translate that I didn't know how to I didn't have the right people to help me and then I went to the Ryan show and I was watching his band play and I was like this is exactly what I need like they they are who I've been missing and um my boyfriend's friend's brother is in the band so I like got connected to them and then I basically just kind of (laughs) stole them like I just took them and we did two weeks in the studio together and we re-recorded uh like almost half a little more than half of the record that I had before and we wrote older and yeah but that whole experience was like crazy we were just it was so different from how I've normally done a record process like we were figuring out songs in real time like all of us together in one room it was crazy so okay (laughs) are how much of the album is written before you get in the room with them and how much of it is written in the room with them in real time? I only wrote older in the room with the band. Got it. So you bring them yeah, all this stuff and they have to then arrange it with you. Yeah. Well, we, so we had a lot of it like pretty much almost done before, but it, it didn't, again, it just wasn't sounding like emotional enough. It sounded like we were having players play in separate rooms and they weren't interacting and there was no, there's no like passion in it. So we ended up re-recording a lot of that stuff with the band. So yeah, we were just kind of all sitting in the same room in like a circle 
And we would just go through the songs, figure them out, record them all together in the room. I'd usually re-record my vocal because the vocal would get lost in the band. But usually we would do like a couple live takes and then we would pick one and build on it. What does it mean to build on it? Like add extra little flavors here and there. Like, But the main... The main um, instruments were, like, recorded in that live take. So we had, like, the drums, the bass. We had two steels. We had a pedal steel and a lap steel. Guitars, you know, piano, all that stuff was, like, recorded in one take. And then if people wanted to, like, overdub stuff and add they were hearing something on this moment, like, we could do that. But the main bones of the song would be live. How magical. It was pretty crazy. I mean... It was kind of, it was difficult for me for a little bit because I was so attached to the versions of these songs that I had before I started re-recording. And so when we were trying to like reimagine these songs that I already had pretty much finished, it just, a lot of it didn't feel right. And I was confused. I was like, well, we're here to, to re-record this. So, you know, I have to at least try, but I was just finding myself pulled back to a couple of the original songs. So a couple of the songs on the album are like basically what we had from the beginning. And we just added a couple of things. So you have deep attachment to these song- songs, but they still don't feel right. Yeah. What about them? I, yes. Like lacking life. Yeah. What were you not able to bring to it? I mean, more than that, that the band was able to bring. Cause like there has to be something else. I think it was just, like, the energy in that room. Like, I think it was just the passion that they all have for their craft. Like, they've been playing together for a while. I mean, they're in Ryan's band. They play together all the time. Like, they know each other, and they know each other's, like, vibes when they play. You know, it's like they are all connected like that. And to have, to capture that in one room, having people who are passionate about what they're doing and talented at their instruments like it just all came together in a way that I don't know how else to explain it It was just like the energy in the room was just palpable and you sorry (laughs) it's the energy was just like you could just feel you can feel it in the music and I think that was what was missing is it scary for you to sit down with people really anybody and present them stuff that's already done very ripped from your reality to any degree and then kind of like tear it apart oh yeah I mean it was so hard for some of the songs it was easier because I was less attached to them and I was kind of like going into the band sessions being like I want to change this because I don't like how this sounds but for a lot of them I was like I really like these versions but I'm going to attempt to change them just to see if we can get something better and then at the end I was like I don't think I don't think we need to change them that much I mean for a couple of them we added stuff like we switched out the drums or we like redid the bass or something but for the most part a couple of the songs were just good already because we made them at the beginning of the process and so they felt good and the stuff that we were making that I was making with the original team before the band like as it as it went along it kind of started to feel less and less right to me So the stuff that we made in the beginning is great, and we kept most of that. But, yeah. It's pretty cool to think that you have a band. (laughs) Yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy. They're amazing. I'm taking them on tour with me. Sick. Obviously, because we, like, made the whole record together, so. (laughs) That's really cool. Yeah, it's going to, I'm actually really excited, and that's crazy because I hate, I've hated touring in the past. But can I'm you, actually excited for this. Can you explain the relationship between you and the stage? Like, wh- what is I, it? I can try. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see the stage? I I think so. I think that my last record, when I was performing it, I mean, I've always like not liked performing, and I couldn't really figure out why for a long time. I was like, oh, maybe I just I'm just not like, maybe I'm just not like made to do this stuff or whatever and now I'm thinking back and I'm like I was performing music that felt inauthentic like I think my last record to me didn't like feel right in my 
soul. Like, that sounds crazy, but it just didn't feel right. And I think it's because I was trying to sound like a lot of different people. Like, I was taking references when I was making that record of what everyone thought was cool at the time and then trying to put all of that into one album. And none of it was me. I was, like, taking other people and putting them in the record, and now I listen back to it, and I'm like, I don't really hear me, and like I hear glimpses of me in like the songwriting, but the production, it just didn't feel like, it doesn't feel now, it doesn't feel right to me, and I don't think it did then either, and so to perform it was to go on stage and have to basically pretend that I was someone that I am not, and I think that's why it felt not good. <laughs> Is there any truth to that album being representative of who you were at the moment that you made I it? I think so. Parts of it. I mean, I listen and I am I can hear myself in parts of it. But the majority of it, I don't think... I think I was just trying to sound like what other people thought was cool. And I was very concerned with what other people thought. And making this record, that was like the last thing on my mind. I mean, I went through, I've been making this record for three years and throughout this whole process, I have really like shifted my values and like what I want as an artist. And I think that just didn't align with my last record. And I was having to play this last record up until like not that long ago. Yeah. Um, and it was hard. It was really hard because I just wasn't, I wasn't there I wasn't with it anymore. How have your values changed? I just feel like I want different things now. I think that I wanted, I think that I thought that I wanted a lot of things. And like I wanted to like be famous, you know, like and like have that lifestyle. Not like to an extreme, but I wanted, you know, recognition from a lot of people and whatever. And now... I, I, I was doing the things that I, I had to do to get there. And I was like, this, I hate this. Like, I hate it. I hate this so much. I, I, why do I want this if I don't, if I don't actually like what I'm doing? And so I think yeah, I just realized that I, I want to just make art. I don't really care about anything else. I mean, if other things happen from the art, like, cool. But that's not the goal anymore. I think the goal is just to make something that's emotional and connects with people and and that makes you feel something. Hello, beautiful human. Every year, millions of gamers experience IGSS, inadequate gaming setup syndrome. Luckily, a cure has been found. You have to go beyond. With the Vibersonic Mattress by Beyond Sleep. This thing has six built-in subwoofers, USB ports for charging, LED lights so you never stub your toe, gives you an acoustic massage when you want it, plus adjustable degrees of comfort. This right here is the best way to game ever. Hear your IGSS today at beyondsleeptech.com. Was your sole goal before to get famous from the No, no, definitely making? not. But I definitely was like thing it was like I wanted that or I thought I wanted that like as a through the music I mean it was definitely my goal has always been to make to make the music but for a while there it got a little muddy and I was kind of like well I, I signed to RCA and I was like oh like I have to like do all these things now and like I should release a deluxe version to five seconds flat or I should like release ceilings with a big feature on it now that it's like popping off and stuff like that and and then I was like I took a step back and I was kind of like ah, no <laughs> like no I don't really want to do that and then I kind of came down to earth and was like, okay, this is actually what I want. I had to do some soul searching. But yeah, now I feel like I'm confident in myself and this album specifically, this music. And that's all that really matters at this point. Is that confidence embodied in the name of it? I think so. I don't know, though. The Does yeah. confidence come with age? <laughs> I don't know. I th I think, maybe. It depends, though. For me, I think, yes. I, at least right now. I feel more confident in myself and, like, my vision as an artist 
than I ever have. But I think that that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with like my actual like age. Like I, I think it more has to do with the things that I have learned as I've gotten older and the the things that I have had to go through during making this record. Like it's all, so I guess, I guess, yes. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What are you thinking? Well, are you going to be performing the old songs or are you so moved on from them that you don't even want to perform them anymore? I am not sure (laughs) yet. I think that I'll probably play a couple of them, but I want to reimagine them in a different, like, arrangement-wise to make them feel more like me right now. Um, It definitely won't it won't be a lot of them. I'll, I'll mostly, I mostly want to play this album because this, this is the tour I'm going on for this album, you know. So, <laughs> do you have the ability to acknowledge though that what you search for today as you make music still does somewhat apply to Five Seconds Flat and everything else you've ever done? Like, there's people feel so deeply understood. I totally. I mean, yeah, I can definitely acknowledge that it's special for a lot of people and it definitely like landed for a lot of people. Um, and I think that's great. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think I would change anything. I don't think I would go back and like make five seconds flat sound different. I think everything is happening the way that it's supposed to, I think. A hundred percent. So I made that record and it got me here and I am so grateful for that. And now I get to, make the music that I want to make. I thought this album's fucking amazing. Thank you. And I genuinely thought it was, like, a really beautiful evolution. Thank you. But also, like, a different sort of challenge. Yeah. And to really wrap my mind around what it means to prepare for two years for an album just to do it in two weeks... Yeah. ...is really special and something that's never done and, like, is only done by really true musicians and storytellers. Like, Mm -hmm. dude, like... I don't know, last person who did that that came on our show maybe was Neil Young. Like, fucking maybe Neil Young. That's crazy. Yeah, it doesn't, that (laughs) that shit doesn't happen. People don't do things a lot. Yeah. You you needed that challenge, though. Definitely. I learned a lot from it. I mean, it it was not like any way that I've ever made an album before. So it was challenging in that way where I, I'm, I like, you know, having a routine and doing it the way that I know how to do it and doing anything outside of that is like very stressful to me. Like it, it was, it brought me a lot of anxiety to think about doing things differently, especially with this music that I care so much about. I just wanted it to be right. I kind of just had to trust the process and I think it worked out, but yeah, it was terrifying. I mean, I was in there for those two weeks and we were like recording stuff and then we would listen back to it and like it didn't I was like this doesn't really s- like sound that good <laughs> like but then but they were like we just have to like wait until it's mixed like the mixing is going to help so much and in the past I have always just worked I mean Philip when I worked with Philip on 5 seconds flat it was just he was mixing so he would just mix as we went like he would add things and reverbs and all that stuff like we were doing it as we were producing so it never sounded bad. It was always like, we're building as we go. Yeah, you got a quality mix when you left right. every day. And that was not the case with this, these sessions. So that was really hard because I don't like to listen to things that sound bad. But does it shape <laughs> your appreciation or your, your view on music at all? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I have so much respect for artists who do it that way because it was so hard. And I also like, I think it was a, it was an exercise in letting go (laughs) because it was really difficult for me to hear like a bounce of what we'd done and be like, I know how this could sound, but it doesn't sound that way yet, but I know it will. And I just had to kind of like sit back and be like, it's going to get there eventually. I just have to let it, let it do its thing, which was, is so hard for me. That's so hard for me. But I, I I think we got there, and I, I just had to, like, yeah, just let go a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> this album's giving, like, real growth. 
Thank you. I think so too. I, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for people to hear it. And personally, I do hear like a story evolution from everything else you've made. And maybe yeah. that's just me, but I do think that that is you. Like your lyrics are you and your story is you. Like yeah. You can't, that yeah. doesn't belong to anybody else. Yeah. And I, I also, I think this record, yeah, the, the lyric wise and content wise is way more mature and like, not much, not, that's the wrong word, but like just more, I don't know what the word is. I just like. Evolved? Yeah. Less naive. I think a lot of this, like, especially my first album, I listened to it and I'm like, holy shit, like you did not know a single thing about anything. And I still don't really think I know anything, but I'm kind of embracing that now. And I mean, I wrote this record about a relationship that I was in in a cycle it was that I could never get out of. Vortex. Exactly. And, um, yeah, I, I think that now, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what was I trying to say? You were writing the album about a cycle you were in? Yes. Yeah. And I feel like I have, I mean, I've written about this relationship in past albums, but this album, I really dove into like, who I was in the cycle and who I was to this person and how I I hurt him and like all all of the stuff that I previously like haven't really touched because it was scary to think about like the fact that I like also wasn't great in that relationship. Um, it's a subject that I've like touched on definitely before, but this album I really I really dove into it and it feels it feels cool. So one relationship gave you how many albums? Well, this one, like all the songs are about him. I've written about this relationship before, but it's like two or three songs an album. But this, I don't know why this, wow. this one is just, this one just, it all, I think this is, because this is the last thing that I have to say about this relationship. I mean, I've been writing about it for years and now <laughs> I just have, this is it. Like I, this album is the last thing I have to say about it. I so. mean, you did an amazing job <laughs> Thank getting you. so much out of it. Yeah. Some people get a song, they get an album. <laughs> You've gotten me on multiple projects and a full album. Yeah. I mean, it was like four years long on and off, so there was a lot of content to, to draw from. Exquisite. Mm, totally. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So there's like closure in that, right? For sure, 100%. Definitely. Damn. Yeah. Do you and think I mean, you go. I mean, I I started writing this album three years ago, and I was still in the cycle. And halfway through that process, like a year ago, year and a half ago, I met my current boyfriend, and everything changed. I mean, everything changed. I was thinking about the the cycle differently. Now that I wasn't in it, I was writing different songs about what it was like to like be outside of it, and yeah, everything changed. When but, that happened. But so. those songs aren't on the album. Which songs? About? Just being out of the cycle? Or they are? No. I think maybe there's like... Yeah, I don't I don't know if those are on there. I think... That's a whole those, other project, well, right? You I milked mean, that for something separate. Maybe a deluxe. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I wrote a lot of songs post that realization, or like a couple of them that made it onto the record, and it was interesting to like be putting myself back in that mindset when I wasn't there anymore and I think that that gave me a lot of new material is there something to this album like finally being done and then your new relationship being able to enter your life and then a whole other chapter emerging as this one comes out yeah I mean I think this site the that relationship and I have just been done with that for like a very long time even before I met my boyfriend so I think that it's already like I mean and I've been working on this album for like way too long I mean three years objectively sounds like not that long of a time but it was excruciating but when was it officially finished the album yeah uh 
like production or like mixing? All of it. Well, we finished mixing last night. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. so yeah, it's not even mastered yet. It's getting mastered this week. Wow. So you know, it's been a long, a long <laughs> journey. Yeah. After this, I am pivoting. I'm taking a break from from this. I need I need some time. It it just sucked all the joy out of it for me. Like there were a lot of obstacles and roadblocks that I encountered along the way, and it just what was the biggest? There were so many. I mean, so many. I mean, I changed management like three times Casual. during this three years, which was that's hard. Wild, yeah, very hard. And like just changing collaborators constantly. I mean, we started mixing with one person, and then we had to pivot, and the deadline was like a week later, and it was like. It's just been a lot. It's been, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Yeah. But I feel like all that was needed to get what we have today. I think so. I, I do think so. As much as it was like so difficult and probably like the most difficult album process I've ever done out of the three that I've worked on. Um, it definitely had to happen. Um, and I am glad that it happened, even though it sucked in the moment. And a lot of times I was like, this is never going to get done. Like, I'm never going to find the right people. I'm never going to find the sound. But, yeah, I think it all had to happen and to get here. And have a band. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Also, would like to go on record for the first time ever and just say that uh, Ryan Beatty's amazing and the album's incredible. I love him so much. He is really special. His record is so good. And him live, he's so he's just so uh, incredible. He's really great. Yeah. I, I don't want to brag, but he first came on he did. our show... Well, he came on before he came on when you were on the show. Really? Yeah, he comes on our show for the first time, I think, 15 years ago or 14 years ago. 14 years ago? Maybe 13, 14, 13, 14. And then he came on again 10 years ago, maybe 11. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. We're either we're old or Ryan Beatty's old. (laughs) I'm kidding. He's incredible. Yes. He is. He's been incredible for a long time. Yeah. And now he's getting the recognition that he he deserves. Yes. That I, album I is spectacular. So good. How did he feel about you stealing his band? <laughs> I don't think he cares that much. Okay. I mean, I've met him <laughs> multiple times now, and, like, I went to a thing, a little performance he did, and he was, like, playing with Mason and Taylor, who were, like, the guitarists and the pianists of the band. And he, he was, I mean, he's not, like, why did you take my band from me? He's, I think it's all like, it's all love. It's all cool. I think, I don't know. Don't ask me though. Ask him. <laughs> it's, I feel like you need, you needed a band. I don't know why. Like it's giving, it's giving like Bruce Springsteen in the East Street band. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's giving. Yeah. It's definitely a level up. I'm, I'm really excited and they're all so sweet and so talented and I'm, I'm so excited for, for tour. I'm so excited for them to, meet my fans on tour. What a cool thing to say. I know. So crazy. I didn't think I would ever say that I'm excited for tour, <laughs> but I am. Well, well, you you managed to put on a pretty cool schedule. It's like four shows here, yeah. four shows. How did you do that? Like, that seems, seems I mean, expensive. when I had, <laughs> it's actually like, well, we, we're not using a bus. That's um, actually cool. You're going to fly like, in and out, right? Yeah, or Healthy. like train, van. Like, a lot of the drives are short and... I kind of I kind of like like just driving. I don't know. Um no bus, which cuts so much money. Yeah. Especially to have it for so long, it would just be so unwise because like we're only using it for like four four days a couple every couple of weeks. Um Yeah, I, I when I had to cancel my Europe uh tour, like over the summer, whenever that was. I was like really miserable because tour was like really kicking my ass, um, like physically and also mentally. I was like actually miserable and I didn't want to do it anymore. I went to my team and I was like, we need, we need to figure out like a better way to do this. So when this album came around and we started planning the tour, I was like, we gotta, we gotta, we can't do like three shows in a row which doesn't sound like that much but when you're on the road for like a whole month straight and you have no breaks it's like horrible it's just horrible and I am so sensitive like I can't I can't do that much in that amount of time and especially like 
having to go on stage and be in front of other people for like an hour every night. Now that I'm saying it out loud, it doesn't sound like that crazy, but it it really is. Like it's it's really draining. And so I kind of was just like, we gotta, we gotta find a different way to do it. And shout out to my agents and my team. Like they really they killed it because now I'm actually excited and I'll have time to like be the best version of myself for every show and I don't have to like try so hard to get myself there every so, show. Can you explain to me the routing? Because if it's what I think it is, I think it may be the future of touring. I hope so. I mean, yeah, that would be cool. How are they staggering it? So are you in a city for a couple days? <sighs> or do you fly in? Are you know. hugged? Like, what's, how's it working? Well, I think we'll mostly be flying in to start the little run. Like, on the East Coast, we're doing, like, New York, Philly, Boston, DC. Cool. So we'll fly in for that run and then we'll, I think we're doing like two shows in each city. So we'll just like hang out for three days. I don't know. We haven't like, I literally have a meeting this week to talk about like, how long do you want to spend in each city? See, sick. That's fun. <laughs> but it's though. like, I get to choose that now. And it's like, it's not like after the show, we're getting on the bus and I have to sleep on the bus and then we wake up in a new city. It's like, I get to like, have a life. <laughs> I think that's like what people don't understand, right? Like yeah. the second you get off stage, you're in a bus, right? Yeah. Or depending on like you're in some sort of vehicle, essentially making your way to the next place immediately. Yeah. You're not even really there for breakdown. No. You have to go and y you sleep and you wake up and you have promo or whatever yeah. the fuck else you have that day. And then and you go on stage everyone and you is do always it. like How what is your what was your favorite city like? What did you do anything fun in any city? I'm like I don't have time. I don't have <laughs> literally any time to do anything fun in and any you're, city. You're never not moving, right? And even when I'm not, like if we have one, if we had one day off, I would be in my hotel room, Recovering. like not doing anything because I I get overstimulated so fast. I need like a whole yeah. couple days to like reset myself after something like that. It was hard, but I think this is going to be so much better. I really, I really feel, it feels good, like, inside when I think about it. Like, I'm excited. And that's what matters. Yeah. And I know, like, I feel so sad that I can't go to, like, every city. Like, we're not, we're not doing, it's not a huge tour. And I feel sad about that. But it's also, like, this is going to be way better for my mental health. And I want to, I would rather do less shows and, and be able to perform better and feel better on stage than do more shows and feel miserable totally. every day. Like, I think it's going to be way better. Right priority. Yeah. How is the show itself going to be different than past tours? Um, well, the band. Of for course. One. Um, I don't want to like give too much away, but we're not, we're not using any tracks. Mm. So it's going to be live. Obviously. Obviously. Because of the music, it just like would make sense. Um, which is really exciting. And the set's going to be different. It's it's just, it's going to be really, I don't want to give too much away, but it's going to be really cool. And I'm really excited because I feel like playing live with no tracks and no click, like nothing you can do so tying much. you down. Yeah, you can literally do whatever you want. We can vamp for however long we want. We can play the outro like a million times, like... I'm I'm just excited, and these I mean this band is amazing. They're so talented. I'm just excited to like experiment. That's with what that means. Yeah. That's real music. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I think so. It is. It really is. Yeah, and it's freedom. Yeah, oh, I'm excited. Yeah. I loved your show before, but this is gonna again real music. Yeah. I'm fucking here for it. I'm excited. I'm a big Lizzie McAlpine fan. <laughs> Thanks. I'm out there <laughs> pounding pavement, letting the world know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Dude, I'm, I'm a part of the fucking street team. Amazing. <laughs> yes. You going to play High School Musical like before or after again? I remember I was standing at the other <laughs> show behind like the booth and the, like High School Musical was on yeah, the screen. Yeah, I was playing. I played like a bunch of like my childhood. <laughs> yeah, um, taste. Like Tan Montana, Selena Gomez. Um, <laughs> probably not. No, <laughs> not for this one. I don't know. I don't know if I, I haven't thought about like a pre-show playlist yet. If you know, it, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, if, it, if, I, if I do have one. It'll be like cool music, <laughs> you know. Uh, you, <laughs> like not that Hannah Montana you, isn't cool. I think that it's very cool, but like, I don't know. I, it has to match the vibe of the Got tour. It. I don't want to like mislead people with the pre-show playlist. Uh, speaking of stars, though, movie star. It's interesting. That's you talking about you and the way this person makes you feel. Mm -hmm. Where is that song coming from? 
inside of my brain. I don't know. No, but like a place of what, right? Is it a place of love or is it a place of... I think it's... Yeah, it was weird. This was like one of the last songs I wrote. Um, so I was kind of removed from it enough to like analyze what was actually happening every time we would see each other again. Because we were like four years on and off. Every time we were in the same city, we would see each other. And every time we'd see each other, it would go the exact same way. It would be like, we would see each other and it would be amazing. And I'd be like, oh my God, like, yes, I missed this. And then it would be like, okay, well, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. And it was just start, I could tell that he, he was just putting me on kind of a pedestal. And like, every time I would hurt him, he would just like forgive me. And I was like, why? <laughs> this is weird. But I would, I used that also. I would like still, I would keep coming back every time because I knew he would be there. He wouldn't like hate me or anything. Dark. I know. Really dark. It's really bad. Which is why, I mean, that's why the whole album is about it because I really had to unpack some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I wrote Movie Star just from a place of like, I can see exactly what was happening and it wasn't. It wasn't great, probably, and, and yeah, it was just getting a little bit tiring to, like, keep doing these things to him that hurt him, obviously, but did, then he would continue to forgive me, and I was like, what? I feel like you should hate me by now. Did he tell you that he was hurt? Yeah, it was obvious. <laughs> what would you do? <sighs> this is make me sound like a bad person, but, like, nothing. <laughs> I would just leave every time, and it was... Oh, it was bad, yeah. It was not good. What do you mean by leave? Like, every time we would come back together, and then he would be like, I want to be with you, or, like, some form of that. And then I would be like, no, sorry. And then I would, and then I would, I would just leave. <laughs> like, every time, that's how it went. Yeah. Why do you run? I don't know. I think there was a lot of things... There was a lot of, it was kind of all, I mean, four years, a long time for this to be happening over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, you were clearly going back too. Yeah, I know. I don't know why. I think when we, we, we dated in college, okay, for one month. <laughs> we oh, we no. officially dated for <laughs> one month, which is insane. And that first, that month was like amazing. It was beautiful. It was, I was like, this is it. Oh my God. And then he broke up with me and he said that it was because I was too sad. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, literally like verbatim, like he was like, it's really hard for me to be happy all the time when you're sad all the time. I was like, oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Um, okay. So this is all making more sense to me now. Yeah. So you want to hurt him because he actually hurt you. Yeah. I mean, not anymore. This was in the past. But yes, that was definitely, it hurt a lot. And then he went back to his ex. You know, it was just like, oh, uh, it was a lot. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of like different layers to this relationship. It would take me like so long to get into all of them. But that was the, that's the gist of it. I mean. Is it only a situation <laughs> from that point forward? Yeah. Is he in other relationships while? We both were in other relationships and then those relationships would end and we would somehow find our way back to each other. Interesting. And they would always end, like, around the same time, weirdly. Like, we, I wasn't, like, talking to him about it. Like, suddenly I would just be in Boston and where, because he was still in school and I would visit my friends there. And and he would be like, oh, yeah, we broke up, like, last week. And I was like, <laughs> like, every time it would be weir weirdly, like, it was very weird. Yeah, I don't know. There was something that, something that just pulled us back together. Is there any fear that that same energy could reemerge? <laughs> no. Not at all, actually. I was, I think, for like the last half of that cycle, I was like so checked out. And I was like, I know that I don't really want to be doing this anymore. But it was just kind of like second nature at that point. It was like muscle memory. Totally. Safety, a bunch of things. Exactly. It was a lot of things that, was, that were leading me to go back to him, even though I knew that I didn't really want to, and I did not feel the same way about him that I used to. But I, I don't know. 
Do you remember the moment where you were like, okay, no more? Like the last time? Or yeah, like, where you're like, oh, fuck, I can't do this again. I'm over. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Good awareness. Period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, period. <laughs> cool. So, when was the last time you spoke to him in person? Or spoke to him at all? Well, he lives here. Oh, you run into him. And he's like in my school, like... My college group, friend group, which I don't really like. I only really talk to one of them anymore, but. Did you graduate Berkeley? Me? Yeah. No. Yeah. I left, I left half, <laughs> I left halfway through, but all my friends were still there. So I would go back and visit them. Rough. And then he would be there. You know, it was just, yeah. What was the question? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. It was. Just, <laughs> well, he, li- yeah, he lives here. So I, I've seen him twice since I moved here. And all while I've been dating my current boyfriend and it's just like, I can, it's just so, obviously it's not the same because I really don't, I'm not, I haven't been there for a long time, but it's, it's been a weird experience. Like, We're in a healthy place. Again. We're in love now. We're yeah. in real love. Yes. You guys have a cat together. No. What? <laughs> I wish I want the a cat. Fuck? I thought it said in my nose that you have a cat together. No. Well, we fostered a dog for like a week and... Um. Yeah, they also seem to have a cat together. So seem. Oh, we're making an assumption. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. We fostered a dog. <laughs> no cat. No, I want true? a cat. How did you know? Are you reading my mind? Like, I want a cat so bad. No, we fostered a dog for a week, and then it was, like, the hardest. I had just moved into my house, and we also had a dog who was not, like, great trained. Oh, and it was, damn. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, it's hard. Yeah. Dogs are really hard. Dogs are hard. They're also mo- really rewarding and beautiful and amazing. Yeah, totally. But well, we were like, we're going to foster this and maybe like, maybe we'll adopt her. And then it was just so hard. And it was also, at a, I was like so unstable in my life. I just moved into the house and nothing was. Thank you. Yeah. But it was, you, it was wild. It was a wild you, time. Did you find stability? Yes, definitely. I love my house. Sick. So. Do you live together with your yes, boyfriend? we do. Wow. Yeah. Mazel tov. Thanks. <laughs> Good energy here, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, definitely. Is he a winner? I think so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> giving. Same guy from the music video, last album, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Remember that? That's how they kind of made the hard launch. They start. He's, he started the music video. Oh, uh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. We like him, man. He's down for a creative collaboration. <laughs> he was nervous about that, but... He played along. He was a good sport. Worked out well. <laughs> what? Worked out well. Look yeah. at you now. Yep. It's giving healthy. <laughs> it's giving healthy. It's giving <laughs> thriving. No, it's good. It's really, yeah. really good. Um, As of uh, maybe last week or two weeks ago, you said Trek 6 was your favorite. And I believe according to this, that is staying. Mm-hmm. Still the same? Mm-hmm. Why is that your favorite? I mean, it's just a good song, I think. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. That's a good answer. Totally I not mean... biased. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wrote, like, I had a version of this before I found the band. And it was very, it was like piano and vocal. And that was it. And, like, I cut the, like, bridge section of the lyrics. I They, they weren't there anymore because the old producer I was working with was like, I don't, we, we don't really need it. And I was like, okay. Um, so it was just like an instrumental outro with like piano. And I was like, okay, that's nice. And then I went to the band and I was like, I feel like it could be cool to like figure this out with the band. And we did. And I was like, this is so good. And I was like, I might want, I'm going to add the, the bridge back in. Cause like, feels like it's cool now with like the whole band in. And, and now I like love that part of the song. And I'm so glad that it turned out the way that it did because I love that part of the song and I'd be so sad if it wasn't in there. And now I just, I just love it. Why'd you, what called you to put it back in there to begin with? Was it just because he was with the band? Yeah. I was just hearing the band play along that second half of the song. And I was like, this is so good. And it just, I want to like keep it going. I want to add like more to the song. Cause originally it was like an interlude. It was, like, supposed to be short and, like, yeah, but now it's, like, definitely not that anymore. And I'm so glad that it's not because I love the full song. I guess follows that one. hmm I guess it's all about trying to love someone you've never met. 
unpack that. I mean, I don't know. it's this giving one, like you actually met the person, but you didn't really know the person. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah, this song, I wrote this song, like, I think a cup, like right before I met Michael, my boyfriend. And this one is like more abstract kind of. I was not really like thinking of a specific situation or anything when I wrote this. I mean, obviously I was writing about the cycle that I was in, but yeah, I kind of, honestly, I was writing this and when I wrote the verses I was imagining like I don't know why I was imagining this but I was imagining like us meeting again like at a wedding like in the future I don't know why like <laughs> like someone that we knew was getting married and we were we both showed up there and it was like the first time we had seen each other in a long time and I wrote the verses from like that perspective like straighten your tie we dance alone like whatever are those the words I don't know but that was where I was coming from with the verses weirdly I don't know why that popped into my head we eat our dinner and then we undress and now we are equals more or less yeah i yeah i don't know it was just about the cycle it was just about the constant going back and doing the same thing over and over again and then the chorus is kind of like the chorus is abstract like i honestly don't really know what it means but it means something but but i don't know it could mean so many different things you know one day it will appear to you one day I that's, mean, every time I hear it, I like think of a different meaning. I mean, I played it on cool. the last tour, and I was every night I was singing it. I was like, oh, "This, this kind of could be about my current relationship. It could be about my past relationship. Like, it could be about anything." But I think, I don't know. I really like. I like that one. Is there any song from this album that when you wrote it meant one thing, but now means something different? Like all of them. Because <laughs> um, I wrote all of them like before I found the band. And then I found the band and we were in those two week sessions. And after a long day of like working with the band, Mason and Taylor and I were like, okay, we're going to write a song. Because I had a song on the track list and we tried to figure it out. And I was like, I don't really like this song anymore. And Mason was like, let's just write a new one. And I was like, okay, sure. So the three of us sat down after a session one day and I was kind of like I had written this other song and I was kind of like playing it with them we were figuring it out and then I was like I don't really like this and I was going through my voice memos and I played them the voice memo that I had written of like the first verse in the chorus of older and they were immediately like this is so good and then they we just kind of like st it just kind of happened and we wrote it in like 20 minutes I mean I already had the verse in the chorus so I just had to write the second verse but we changed the chorus melody. Like it all came together so fast. And after writing that song, because lyrically that song I wrote, I started when I was still in the cycle and I wrote the first verse and the chorus when I was about that relationship that I was in. And then these band sessions happened and I was like so far removed from that. And I was like, I don't really know how to finish this song because I'm I don't know like what else to write about about this relationship. And then it kind of just came to me. I don't know how I write. It just kind of comes out. And I was just writing suddenly about like my mom getting older and like life and like the cyclical nature of, of everything in life. And, you know, just like, I don't know. I just wrote it about something different that also connected back and to the chorus and everything and after I wrote that verse I was like okay this album like actually is also about my growth through the past three years and like how much I have changed and what I have learned and it's it became less about the relationship to me in that moment and so then I listened back to all the other songs and I was like oh these could mean so many different things like movie star for example I wrote that about the relationship but I also listen to it sometimes and I'm like this also could be about like my relationship to my career and like people putting me on a pedestal and like I'm just a human you know like it could so many of these songs now have different meanings for me and I also think that's why I chose that the t album title to be older because it just it recontextualized the whole album for me and it just felt it felt right and I had a different name for so long it was gonna be called Vortex really Art is wild. I know. From the moment I wrote that song, I was like, this album is going to be called Vortex because it was the cycle and all that stuff. And and then... But it ends with Vortex. So the album, like, you leave the cycle at the end of it. Yeah. 
or I, I'm close to leaving, hopefully, at the end of Vortex. Because I'm like, one day, someday, one day, someday, you'll come back and I'll say no. That day has approached. That day is here. That day was here. That happened a long time ago. <laughs> and you said no? I mean, it didn't actually happen that way, but I said no. Like, you know, metaphorically. <laughs> 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 you know. By the way, Older is waiting for you. It's all on Amazon Music. There's a link below. What are you thinking? Can you tell the story behind Drunk Running? <laughs> Everyone always asks me about this song. It's so that, funny. Yeah, like the lyrics stand out and the title stands out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I Again, this is about my relationship. And um, I think after I'd gradu I graduated. I did not graduate. <laughs> after I dropped out <laughs> of Berkeley, um, I wasn't there and I heard like, or maybe I was studying abroad. I wasn't on campus and my ex was like really drunk one night and was running down the street with his friends and like there was like a pothole on the street and he like fell into it weirdly and like literally broke his leg. Um, he's, he's fine now. I don't know he's what, still so walking. Shocked, but that's, I don't know, like, <laughs> he's all good. Yeah. His leg is not broken anymore. But I was thinking about that and also... I wrote this song kind of later in the process as well. And I had just gone out with my friends and seen him out like with, he was like in the group that we were in. And I was just thinking, like we were all drinking and I don't really drink. So I wasn't drinking, but everyone was drinking around me. And I was just like observing him and how like we were being really awkward to each other. Like he, he like was avoiding me. And I was like, okay, I get that. But I was just thinking about it. And then I was thinking about, that moment and then I just kind of sat down and it all it all came out and then the bridge is like I think this might be my fault like I think that I might have drove you to this like drinking <laughs> I don't know I know that I did it but but it's just a thought you know I mean I don't know yeah does that evasive thought or whatever it is that spiral come in the moment or when you're just trying to turn it into a song I think it's just later when I like processed it like because I don't really I wasn't like in the moment at the bar being like oh my god this is a song and I'm gonna write these lyrics right now like I need to think about this or right like, now I did this to him yeah no definitely not <laughs> that was later and I was like reflecting and I was like ah this might be my fault <laughs> you know I don't know that's basically what all the songs are about it's like toward, definitely towards the end because it I know I tried to order the track list in a way that was like tells a story I mean I try to do that with every one of my albums but this one in particular was like important because it's about one relationship usually I have albums that are about like I've written about multiple different people on the same album but this one was like it's just about one person so I have to order it correctly and definitely towards the second half of the album it's like this is I think this might be my fault like who are we blaming here like is it your fault is it my fault like what's going on and I think I dove into that more so this is that's why this is on the second half of the, the track list it's wild that there's a whole body of work on one person I know how do you think they feel about it do you I don't even know. I'm care scared. to think I mean <laughs> I have thought about it actually a lot recently now that it's like we finished mixing and like the album's pretty much done I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't know. I'm a little nervous. But in the past, I mean, like, one of these songs I wrote, like, the first song that I wrote for this album was, like, It Tends to Do. And at that point, we were still in contact, and I went to Boston, and I played him that song. Like, he's heard that song before. <laughs> so, like, so, like, you know. That's just what we would, I mean, that's just what we would do. We would just play each other's songs about each other, which was weird. That's <laughs> such I'm thinking a, about it, but. It's such a musician thing to I do. I know, I know, I know. But, yeah, so he's heard, like, at least a couple of these songs, I think. I don't know. I'm a little scared. That's okay. But I think everything's going to be fine, because it's not like, I don't think it's really like. None of these are like diss tracks. Like I'm not like <laughs> you suck. You know, it's like if anything, a lot of it's accountability and awareness. So yeah, I think you're more than okay. I think so. It's beautiful. It's art. Yeah, thanks. It really is a great album. 
Thank you. It's spectacular. That means a lot. <laughs> you should be really proud. Thank you. Are you nervous about people listening to it because they might be expecting five seconds flat part two? Definitely. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yes. Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little scared about that, and also like the tour. I'm scared of people. Well, you did say in. if you're coming to hear ceilings, you better not come, or you shouldn't come, or I something. I mean, it's just like if you only know that song and you aren't inter- interested in like listening to this project, like. You know, it's probably not the show for you. And that's okay. Like, it doesn't, that's fine. I just, I am entering a new era of like my artist, artistry, my career, like myself. I just, yeah, your life. Yeah. So I, I'm playing this new album on tour and I'm, I made this album because it's just where I'm at and who I am. And if people don't fuck with it, then that's fine. But would you kind of agree that if you listen to Five Seconds Flat, the one song that kind of does fit on the album ceilings. is Ceilings? Yeah. Which is why I'll probably end up playing it <laughs> on the tour. But, I, you know, I'm going to rearrange it. I'm going to make it fit. And I'm going to... I think the band could do crazy things with that song. So we'll see. But I am very nervous because I don't want people to come to the tour or listen to the album expecting, like, this big production and all this stuff. I, I want them. I want them to be open minded, you know? And just I don't know. I'm just really proud of this album and this part of myself and this like new person I feel like I've become through making this album and going through all the things I had to go through to make it. So that's what matters more I than really anything. want. It's that growth. Yeah. I just hope that people see that and appreciate that. That's all that I want. <laughs> Go in with an open mind and an open heart. Yep. <laughs> and respect art for what it is. It is art and an extension of this fine human being sitting across from <laughs> you and I. And I'm telling you, as a Lizzie McAlpine fan, I was not disappointed. That's really good to Nor hear. was I totally shocked at all by the evolution. Yeah. So It feels like a natural yes. evolution it's to me. It's giving genuine, authentic, natural. So reel yeah. it back. All will be okay. I think so. I'm We've come this it. far. I mean, I, th- I, you, I you forced me to. I think I really liked, but then my link stopped working, so I couldn't go back and confirm. <laughs> but that has like the. <laughs> it's true. I was like, Sorry. Oh, I think yeah. it was the right one. But is that the one with like the haunting kind of piano in it? Yeah. 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 I like that. Thank you. I honestly like during the mixing process, like this week, I was like, I don't know if this song should be on the album. I almost took it off. Why? I don't know. I've re- I recorded, it's the demo that I recorded in my apartment and we didn't change a single thing and we just used the demo that I made and I was not, Watch I was it. not expecting that to like be the final product, you know, but Mason and Taylor were really adamant about like, cause I, when I met with them the first time I played them like all the demos that I had and I was playing them the old produced versions and then I got to, you forced me to and I was like, I'm just going to play like my demo that I made and they were like, that was incredible. Like you, we have to just keep it like this. And I was like, sure, whatever. <laughs> and then it kind of grew on me and they were so adamant about it. I was like, okay, great. And now it's just like, I just record, you can hear kind of like the street noises in the background. Yeah, but there's something like, special about that. I think so. I think now I, I agree that it, I mean, it should be on the album just because like content wise, it makes total sense in that, in that spot. But yeah, I think it's cool that that's the one song on the album that, like, I am only, like, it's just me credited. Like, I produced it, I recorded it, I sang it, I wrote it, you know, like, it's just me, which is cool. And Mason was also like, I w- it would be so cool if that one song on the record was just you when no one else touched it. So Special. I think so, yeah. You gotta listen to Older, it's waiting for you on Amazon Music. What else are you thinking? The only other note I had on here for All Falls Down, I, I said old timey. <laughs> it's because the woodwinds, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. that was it. Again, couldn't go back and re-listen to it. I but. love the woodwinds. It's controversial, I don't know, but I love them. What is a what is a woodwind? Like the flutes, flutes the clarinets, the... Yeah, pretend I didn't ask All that, that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's really embarrassing. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Um, it's a learning environment. It's a no judgment zone. Um... Yeah, I love that song. We tried to change that also during the band sessions, and I just missed the original version. I missed the woodwinds. Like, I like them. I think they're kind of fun and corny and, like, 
I, I love them. And there's no woodwinds on the rest of the album, but it somehow fits. And I think it's cool. Because I was listening to a lot of Andy Schaff when I first when I first started producing the record without the band. And that definitely inspired that song, like just the woodwinds. And yeah, it just stuck. I really like it. Listen to the woodwinds. Only <laughs> on Amazon Music. Also, I love... You've had some pretty good uh, collaboration, like little like features, yeah, between projects. I got to give you credit. Thank you. you. Know, you've done the right ones. Yeah, I think so. Popping in there, the right viral moment. <laughs> the Nile Horan, uh, you can start a cult. Fucking good. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love that song, and he's so sweet. I mean, he's he's, he's so awesome. It was it was great. Really special. Person. Yeah. Damn, it's a good. It's a good song, and you added something new to it. Yeah, thank you. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. I listened to it. Yeah. I love that song. Fuck, it's good. Thanks. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Keep being you. Lizzie I will McAlpine. try my best. <laughs> just just keep on keeping on. Okay. You're fucking awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're a real one. All of Lizzie's music waiting for you on Amazon Music. Go uh, follow her page. Anything else, Daniel? Yeah, the first thing I noticed when you walked in is you're from Philadelphia. You're wearing, you're wearing a Raiders shirt, but I assume you don't care about the Eagles. Not really. All right. I don't really watch sports. <laughs> Although we were mixing this week. I mixed with this um, Andrew Sarlo. And we were mixing. And he was like, he put the hockey game on. Oh. And he was like, it's going to be over in like 10 minutes. Can we just like watch the rest? And we were like in the middle of mixing. I was like, sure. So we just took a break. And we watched the last 10 minutes of the hockey. And I was in. I was like, <laughs> holy shit. This is like really intense. He was explaining like all the lore to me, like behind the, the teams <laughs> and like what the players do. He was like, this player does this and like this is why they're fighting. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I'm a hockey girl now. So like, do you know like who and what the Raiders are? No. Okay. <laughs> cool. Do you know what hockey teams you were watching? The New York Rangers, Rangers. versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. That was good. Right? Yeah. That was good. Yeah, two teams. <laughs> so good that we'll gloss over Thank the fact you. that you're wearing a t-shirt for a team that you don't even know it's worth No, I bought this like last week. I thrifted it. Well, the team's been it around for, I don't cool. know, like maybe 30 years. Yeah. It's cool though. It looks cool. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sick. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? No. <laughs> You're one in a trillion, Lizzie McAlpine. Oh, thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me. You're amazing. Lizzie, everybody. Woo! Yay! Yay.